All right, guys, back here on Southeastern 14 with Max Barr. We are previewing uh, the other SEC NCAA tournament game in the Sweet 16 as a Tennessee. We'll take on Creighton in the Midwest region. And uh, if you want, you can already check out our Alabama-North Carolina preview as well here on the channel. But before we dive into this matchup, let's tell you about our friends at Bet Online. The tournament is here. Bet Online, your bracket headquarters for the season. Um, and uh, they have, of course, the odds, lines, and info you need for every game and every round, right up until the national championship. Access the most up to the minute wagering information anytime for your desktop or mobile devices. Um, so head on over to Bet Online today, get in on the action. Remember, use the promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Max, these two teams, um, we sort of expected to meet in the Sweet 16 here in this one, and. Um, now you've kind of got a situation where they're matching up and Creighton is coming off of victories over Akron and Oregon, the wild double overtime win over Oregon, 86, 73, uh, Tennessee, a much different game against Texas, 62, 58. And that one, the balls, you know, struggled offensively. They still find a way to get the win uh, with their defense. Of course, they beat St. Peter's 83 to 49 in the first round, not even close. Uh, so, here we are, uh, the two and the three matching up in the Midwest, and uh, should make for a fun matchup. Yeah, I don't, I don't normally do this. I don't normally add on to the ad read, but hey, if you want to get your prop bets in before they, before they're stripped away from us unlawfully, <laughs> head over to Bet Online, get your prop bets in while they're still there. Um, okay, breaking down this matchup. Man, 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 man. There's not much to separate them. Um, but there are a few things that I do like on, on both sides, actually. Um, having a hard time. If I'm a betting man, I'm not not putting too much on this one here. So the main thing that I like with the Tennessee side offensively, is I think they've got the weapons to beat the drop coverage that Creighton plays. Uh, that that mid-range game, Tennessee happens to have it this year. Um, and what I'm talking about here is, so guys, when you look at point distribution for the Creighton defense, they are number one. They let up the highest amount of their percentage of their total points. The highest percentage of it in the nation comes from two. 63.1% of their allowed points, the opponents are making it from two. 337 threes, dead last and allowed from free throws. So they're not going to put you on the line at all. They're going to give you that mid-range. They're going to make you make that mid-range. Well, guess what? Dalton Connect, Ziegler, Adu, Triple J, they all have a mid-range game. So there's that little angle that I like, that usually that uncomfortable mid-range game that Creighton puts you into, runs you off the, the three-point line, but then Kalkbrenner's not going to follow you down low. He's going to alter your shot, most likely block it. We'll give you that mid-range, and I like how Tennessee has that. But then flipping it onto the Creighton side, Blake, we've been saying it all year. The team that Tennessee has struggled with has been the team that runs their half-court offense at their pace, slows the game down, make it makes it physical. When you're looking at offensive tempo, Tennessee 24th in the nation, Creighton 182nd, almost two full seconds on average slower per offensive possession. So – I think you got an angle on both offenses where there's a path to success with Tennessee. I think they can, they can hit that mid range and they can find success in there early and kind of make the Creighton defense maybe have to change some things that they don't normally, but then also on the other side, this slow methodical high efficiency offense has been the team that has gotten to Tennessee this year, Blake. Yeah, like you, you mentioned before, they like to play the up-tempo style, um, yep. a little different than we're used to with Tennessee, but that's why this team has been different is, you know, they've had Dalton connect, they've they've played a little bit more, you know, free-flowing offensively, and um, yeah, I mean, it's, like you mentioned, we, we've, throughout the years, um, kind of looked at Tennessee and figured out, okay, here's how they have to win, and yep. Look, a lot of it at times looked like the Tennessee-Texas game where you're going to have a team that struggles a little bit offensively, but they're going to win it with their defense. But that's kind of been the outlier this year, and I think that's the good thing for Tennessee heading into this matchup is that's not really been the theme. Sure, they've had some bad offensive games, um, but overall they've still found a way to win 26 games at this point because they are one of the best defensive teams in the country. And I mean, I, mean, I mentioned, look, coming into this tournament, I said I, I thought – you know, in my bracket, I had Creighton advancing. 
because I said I just didn't like the matchup for Tennessee. And I still don't think this is the best matchup out there, but I do think there are some things that you look at that make you feel a little bit better maybe uh, about Tennessee. Now, I will say this up front. They're not going to be able to shoot the ball the way they did um, against Texas and win this game. I think that's going to be very hard to do Yeah, because uh, I think these are two completely different teams, Creighton and Texas. So keep that in mind up front. Uh, but I do think defensively there are going to be some things that Tennessee can do to frustrate Creighton a little bit um, because, you know, again, this is a team that's going to take a lot of shots from the perimeter. They get so many of their points from three, 39.9%. That is 11th in the country. Where else? Free throws, 14.5%, 350th nationally. They don't get anything from the free throw line, basically. From two, 45.7% of their points, 326 nationally. So they are a team that's going to fire up a lot of threes. And guess what? Tennessee is a team that doesn't allow many people to just go off from three because of the way they defend on the perimeter. We talk about it. Tennessee will force you further and further and further out. And then what happens if you drive around them because they've got all this pressure on you? Well, then you got to go inside and meet Jonas Adu. Um, you know, or you've got to have Ziegler coming behind to swipe you or Vescovy or someone like that, Meshack. Um, so I think Tennessee's defense can be a little problematic here for Creighton. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, Tennessee, you know, if let's say Tennessee loses this game, what's going to be the story? Dalton Connect doesn't have a great game. And they go, you know, three of twenty-five from three again because I think that's going to be challenging to win a game like this. Yeah, I think I I think you're right on with that. One little thing that I I know I'm going to be biased towards the SEC a little bit, but I'll be honest when I when it just comes to my mind, you know, oh Kalkbrenner or Adu, I I feel like in my mind I'm like oh Kalkbrenner. You know, he's one of the best one of the best bigs in the in the nation. He's been there for years. The guy plays a hundred percent of their minutes at center. Does not foul. You know, it's everything you would want in a in a in a center. And he averages over 17 a game. But when you go on Ken Palm, you look at the big east all Ken Palm team, Kalkbrenner comes in at fifth for for players. Um, they also have Shireman and Alexander on there. So it's a, it's a solid big three. But Kalkbrenner's at fifth. You go to the SEC. All Ken Palm team. Jonas Adu is at fifth. I feel like the national kind of general consensus is that, well, wow, Kalk, yeah, Kalk Brenner's got the edge. Uh, they're going to have the edge down low. Not so fast, honestly. Adu has had an incredible year. If you look at his efficiency, what he does night in, night out, and what he does to protect the rim, Adu is right up there on the computers with Kalkbrenner right there when it comes to efficiency and what they mean to their team. So I don't think there's that like overwhelming advantage for Creighton that most people think. I don't think people are giving Adu enough credit, Like, Well, I mean, again, we've said he's a sneaky player of the year type candidate in any other year. I mean, just because there were so many guys in front of him this year, but I, I think he could be the difference maker. I, I think that he's kind of that, if there's a player coming out of here, we're not like we most likely believe it'll be Dalton Connect. But if it's not, and Tennessee gets the win, it's probably Adu. We're going to look back and say, hey, he's the reason they won this game, based on how he impacted shots. Um, you know, if again Creighton could not get they what they wanted from three, and they had to try to get it from two or get to the line, Adu was just in there making sure that didn't happen. Um, yeah, and I mean again, that's just a huge matchup with him and Cockbrenner, and so. I think that's, you know, the one you're circling here for sure, other than just the obvious ones with all the other guys that can uh, do things. I think, you know, Ziegler and Ashworth, that's a an interesting one. Oh, yeah. um, you know, just, again, because we we know how much Ziegler can disrupt what another team wants to do. And uh, I think that's what it comes down to for me is if Tennessee can be their usual disruptive selves defensively. Um, and, you know, we talked about in, in games like against Alabama, those are – ones that have stood out, but they've done it against other teams too, where they just force you to start your offense much further out. They don't allow you to get anything easy um, and and all those things. And I think that's going to be it here. If, if Tennessee wins, it'll be those reasons. If Creighton wins, I think it'll pretty much go back to, look, this is one of the most experienced teams in the country. 
they have the size, um, you know, to combat again, what Tennessee has, what they do and such. Um, and you know, they, they don't, they do a lot of things well. And I was going to say like, they don't really have a lot of weaknesses. And mm-hmm. I think that's always important when you get to this time of year is there's not a lot of stuff that I can poke holes in with Creighton, uh, because they just, they seem like one of those teams that not only can make a final four, like they are a national championship type team when they yeah. are clicking. Uh, and we've seen that this season. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big challenge. Uh, I think, um, I think Tennessee's a little bit deeper and that could play a role here, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it's hard to pick this game because I feel like you've got two teams who are here for a reason. And, um, I think this is going to be a, a grinded out type game based on maybe the, the tempo, but also just because, you know, if you've got one of the best defensive teams out there going up against one of the best offensive teams out there too. Uh, and so it's, it's quite a matchup. Yeah, and another thing that makes this game, kind of any Creighton game, really hard to predict is the similar reasons to why Alabama games are so high to, hard to predict. When you have that that three-point rate so high, I mean, Creighton's seventh nationally in three-point rate, 48.7% of their field goal attempts are threes. Half of them, right? So when you have that, level of variance of three-point shooting it is so hard to predict i mean you could get a game where you beat the absolute breaks off of uconn and blow them out of the gym by 20 or you could also have a game where you let butler score 99 on you in your home court and you lose like or you could go to st john's and, and and get drilled by 14 or you could play marquette and crush them by 14 it's so it's it's very it's hard to predict with that three point variance and are the shots falling? Are the shots not falling? And how does that change the course of the game? I hate to say this, but I really think that the first four to eight minutes of this game might be the most important because if you get Creighton out with a lead and now Tennessee's trying to chase from behind, might apply some pressure. They Ashworth breaks it. There's an open three. They're going to make, you know, and you can see how Creighton can kind of just pour on that offense. But if Tennessee starts out hot, Connect makes back-to-back mid-range jumpers. Adu gets left open a little bit on a, you know, a free throw line jumper. And all of a sudden, Tennessee's up eight to two. And now it's like, well, oh boy, now they're going to dig their heels and they're not going to give Creighton any threes. It's like, I just, I feel like, whatever team makes their shots early and can kind of play their style is going to have a major upper hand in this one. I don't know. It's so close. All right. Picks. Since I see my internet continuing to just completely. Looks good to me. They're like, uh, my internet being good. It's like the Cinderella of the NCAA tournament. Um, it's a complete upset. Uh, but all right, Max, it's a tough one. Like I said, to pick, because I think this is, I'd be surprised if this isn't close, like the entire way. I just I don't know if I see either one of these teams pulling away uh, here. But mm. yeah, I mean, when you look at you look at Creighton's last few losses in the NCAA tournament, it was a one point loss to San Diego State last year. The year before that, it was a seven point loss to Kansas, who ended up winning the national championship. Uh, the year before that, they ended up losing to Gonzaga, who was a number the number one overall seed. So it's like they're so due, but so is Tennessee. Um I'm gonna trust the defense. And that for me personally, I trust the team that doesn't rely on threes as more. I'm gonna go Tennessee here outright, but I'm just putting out a warning to SEC fans and homers and stuff like that. I'm not a – do not bet on this game. Just don't. Because with the how high the three-point variance is, the experience of Creighton, also the variance of Tennessee with Dalton Connect. He can drop 40 or he can drop 12. Um, I'm going to go Tennessee, but this is probably the most intriguing matchup for me out of the – out of every Sweet 16 matchup. Just because whatever coach wins – they kind of break through that that 
cloud of lack of March success that's on him. Whatever coach breaks through, it's a huge breakthrough for that program. So there's a lot at stake in this one. All right, so the teams that beat Tennessee and SEC play minus Kentucky in the regular season finale all had one thing in common. They were more physical than Tennessee, yes. and you do not find a lot of teams out there that are more physical than Tennessee. Mississippi State, Texas A&M, South Carolina, I think we'd rank them probably with Tennessee in terms of the most physical teams in the league. Yep. Um, and so is Creighton going to be more physical than Tennessee? I don't think so. Um, I think Tennessee will probably be the most physical team in this game, and because of that, I what I said earlier, I feel like Tennessee forcing them, which is what they want. They, they want to get a lot of their points from three. We've seen it this year, but I think the way Tennessee plays defense, if that is what you're relying on, you're, you could find yourself in, in big trouble um, because we've seen that with other teams this year. And so it's just something to look at. You can still look over and say, all right, well, Tennessee's allowed Kentucky to shoot 15 to 29. They've allowed, I don't know, Auburn shot 41%, all this kind of stuff. It, it's fine, but I think it's just it's how they force you to play. Mm -hmm. And I am also going to ride with the Tennessee defense on this one. Um, I don't – I'm a little more nervous offensively. Be lying if I said I'm not after that Texas game. Um, I could say they're not going to play that poorly off or shoot the ball that poorly, but it's certainly possible. Uh, but I think I, – I tend to believe this is a little bit lower scoring here. Um, maybe not 62, 58, but I feel like it, like you said, there's a lot of variance with a three point shot. And so that's going to play into it too, but I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to flip my pick a little bit here. Cause I had great advancing in the bracket. Um, I just, I think the more I look at the matchup, I don't hate it as much for Tennessee as I did going into it. Uh, so I will, I will take a chance and go with the balls. So I will say this, if if Tennessee misses their first few mid-range shots and and it looks like that shot is not falling early, I'm going to I'm going to start sweating about 4 minutes into the game. Yeah. You don't want them playing from behind big here. No. So, yeah, you don't. Um cuz that I don't think is the path to success for Tennessee at all cuz we talk about certain SEC teams that have to shoot their way back into games. I don't think you want that for Tennessee. No. Um, no, no, no. no. Not to the extreme of like a Mississippi State that we mentioned against Michigan State, but you just you don't want that. Um, yeah. I'm telling you, that's a bad setup. Creighton will – it may not be close if that's the case because I would not like that setup for Tennessee yeah. at all because um, Creighton could just put them away with, with the three-point shot if they get open looks. So um, we'll see. Uh, I think this should be a great game. Uh, could make just as many reasons to pick Creighton. We're both going to pick the balls. It's not going to make Reese happy and other Tennessee fans who feel like maybe we have just put uh, the Southeastern 14 kiss of death on uh, the balls. Uh, if you're a Creighton fan, you, you probably should be excited. First, first time watching the channel, uh, when we pick against yeah. a team unanimously, uh, that's usually uh, good for that team. So, anyways, uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, should be a fun game. And uh, yeah, check out everything else we got on the channel. Here covering the NCAA tournaments and SEC football, baseball, all that good stuff. But I uh, appreciate you guys uh, as always, and we'll talk to you again here soon. That's how.